When I'm not holding a guitar caucus to determine which brand gets to be represented in this video, I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. I have a guitar related question, that's good. Can you explain or make a video about bridges and choruses that changes the mood? Like for instance, if you write a minor chord verse, but maybe you wanna have an uplifting feel to the chorus or bridge, how would you tackle that? Do you choose major chords within the scale? Do you change the key? Maybe run through your thought of different scenarios. Thanks in advance. Keep up the good razzmatazz and work. Great question, and I think really it can be answered succinctly by using your ears and then just kind of like shuffling through and just trying to find what you want. But I'm gonna go through some different examples of maybe less tasty bridges to more tasty bridges because it really just kind of depends on your taste. That's why we're doing different levels of tastiness, okay? So let's take something super basic in the key of C. I know some people are like, you. I thought the key of D was the key of 2020. That doesn't mean we're gonna do everything in the key of D this year. So I'm already defensive. <laughs> key of C, most common chord progression is like a one, five, six, four. If you don't know what that means, I'm gonna link you to another video showing how to populate chords from a key, which is, the utmost important thing you could ever learn in music. So if you don't know like a one, five, six, four in C means, uh, watch that video first. But basically that means C major to G major, A minor to F major. Okay, so super, super simple. Let's say this is like the verse and the chorus and we're operating under a premise. Maybe this is just like whatever the verse, C to G, A minor, F. Maybe it even has one change, right? Maybe it goes like uh, like D minor to F, D minor to G, that maybe leads you back into it, right? So basically, that's kind of a good example of something that is keeping a very similar mood in kind of a basic traditional way, okay? So if we go through how we might want to add or approach adding a bridge to that, I think the main thing to do is first think of the chords in the key that have not been represented. Now in any key there's going to be six main chords and a bunch of different variations of that chord. What I mean by that is like, you know, we have C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, and A minor. Now we can add diminished chords or we can dress those other chords up. Like F can be F major 7, G can be G dominant 7, but in that example that I just used, the one chord of those six that we haven't used yet would be the E minor. So maybe we could like use that and stay totally within the key and then just have something that sounds a little bit di different. All right, so we have C to G, A minor, super basic. Remember that second part was D minor to F, D minor to G, E minor. leads us back to C. Okay, so you notice that maybe that E minor did kind of switch it up a little bit because the tonal center of what we're doing was major. So we're hearing a lot of C majorness. And even though we took a chord from that key that was minor, that E minor chord and introduced it, it still sounded a little bit different. It sounded a little bridgy, okay? But it didn't really sound tasty, all right? So that's level one of taste. That's like if I tried cooking something with an Instapot, which I did do one time and it turned out edible, but again, not the tastiest thing that you could do, okay? So that's just learn, learning the main chords that go in a key and then applying whichever chords you haven't used yet. If you, want, if you want to change the mood and it's sounding major, take one of the minor chords you haven't used yet or have used seldomly, use that. If you want to take it the opposite, use one of the major chords. The one thing I will say that maybe you want to try to avoid is to not use the main key, the tonic that you're in, in the bridge. So that means that we started the whole thing with C major. Whatever chords you pick, don't have a C major in there because the bridge is usually meant to kind of like be something a little bit different, which we'll get into the more the tastier stuff in a second, but you want it to be a little bit different in general. That's why there's a bridge. Now, I want to take a second to just say that not all songs need bridges by any means. Uh, a lot of times you, I, I'll hear a song and the bridge seems super forced. And again, I don't think that's really 
in the spirit of songwriting. So don't think that you always have to have a bridge first and foremost, if I should say at the beginning of the video. But if, if it does call for a bridge, that's the easiest way to add something within the key. Now I think the next level up tastiness wise is let's focus on the E minor chord, but let's make it an E7 chord, okay? So this is gonna be a term that we're gonna call a secondary dominant. Now, if you don't know what like a dominant chord means, basically in any key it's the five chord, okay? So C, D, E, F, G. That five chord is always gonna lead you somewhere. It's always gonna push you. It's gonna add a little bit of tension, specifically if you make it a dominant seventh chord to home base or the one chord, right? So that's why uh, if you notice that one progression that we used earlier, we had like the D to F, D minor to F, D minor to G, that begs us to go home to C. Because every time you play the five chord in a key, G dominant seven, most of the time, that's gonna take you home to one, all right? So I think one of the most common ways to kind of go outside a key but still stay in the ballpark, not make it sound too crazy, is to take any chords, uh, any key's third chord, so in the key of C, C, D, E, remember we played E minor, just as an example of that bridge, to make it a little more interesting and kind of push it in a different direction, make that an E dominant seven chord, okay? So now once you have this other dominant seven chord at your disposal chord, remember G was the first dominant seven chord we used, E is a second dominant seven chord at our disposal, AKA a secondary dominant, okay? Now, where this leads us to, it's kind of up to you and how far outside you want to take it. Basically, it's going to lead us to an A major or an A minor. All right, if you want to stay really close to what we're doing, hit that E7 and then take it to A minor because A minor is in that key, like you know, because you watched the video where you populate a chord, uh, key with chords, right? So, whatever you play from there, maybe just avoid C major, but really just take that E7 to A minor. A minor, F, D minor, right? G7, back to home. One, five, six, four. Right, okay. Little tastier. This is like the second time I used the Instapot and someone told me to put some kind of spice that I've never heard of before. It's just a tiny bit tastier, okay? Now, to make it tastier than that, but still use the same trick, use that secondary dominant, but instead of going to A minor, make it A major, okay? Now, this is really technically a key change at this point, okay? Even if you use E7 to A minor, that generally doesn't count as a key change in most people's opinion. Some people might argue that. I don't see it as a key change. You're just going to the relative minor. But if you do make that secondary dominant to major, now we're playing with a whole different set of chords, okay? Because the chords in the key of A minor are the same chords in the key of C major, pretty much. But the chords in the key of A major, now we're really dealing with like a lot of different kind of animals at our disposal, right? So let's do the same thing, but now let's just start playing around in the key of A, all right? So we got C, G, A minor, F. We can even throw that second part, D minor. when I want to go back to the chorus, I hit this, the dominant that we started with. However I make my way there, there are more graceful ways to do that, but that'll bring you back home, okay? So really following the dominant chords is a great way to kind of get outside of key to make an interesting sounding bridge that is kind of tasty. And you're doing it in a fluid musical way where you're actually kind of flexing your muscles to uh, your, music th your music theory muscles, so to speak. Now, the tastiest, the the restaurant when you're in a foreign country and you're getting like the actual cultural center of food and not just kind of like the bland Americanized version of Peruvian food. Now you're, you're in the heart of Cusco at this point, eh? going for something super tasty. This is where you're kind of intentionally doing things. Now, basic general rule that you can always do here without using any music theory is just always go to B major. Now, 
not a lot of songs are in B major. So it almost seems like anytime you go to B major, just out of the blue, it seems like a key change or a bridge. Because if you look at like the list of the most popular songs in B major, like rounding out the top five is like the song from Ghostbusters. So that just shows you how slim the pickings are. Nothing against Ghostbusters, but in the grand scheme of the totality of music, slim pickings, right? So one thing that I like to do is to kind of take a chord, take a note that is not in the key, that is between chords in the key, and then really just kind of hammer home on that. So for instance, an example of when I like consciously thought of this, I have the song, one of my favorite chord progressions that I've written is from the song called Buried, which I'll link you to, where it's actually kind of in like A major or E, depending on how you look at it. It goes E major to like a D nine type of thing, C sharp, A, E, D major seven, A, all right? So then the, the chorus is a little bit different, but I'm still in the same thing, B. And then I wanted something to kind of change it up here. So I went to C sharp, or I went to C minor, to B minor. And as long as you kind of keep the vibe of the strumming pattern, and then this is a song that is generally a bigger production with a bunch of instruments, as long as you keep the vibe, I think you can get away with doing something a little more drastic. And again, if that's in the key of A, you know, the chords are going to be A major, B minor, C sharp minor, D major, but really, that C note is not in there. So really take that C, make it a minor seven, and then just kind of like slap it in there, okay? So an example of what that would be, that would be the note in between the two and the three, okay? So again, if we go back to the key of C major, and make that our tonal center, we grab C major, a minor third away, that would be finding a way to put some kind of E flat into that, key progression, right? So maybe I want to start off right just with the bat. A uh, uh, song I'm working on starts with C major seven. Two and a half, right? So we got C major. It's minor th third. That shouldn't be there, but as long as you sell it convincingly enough, it kind of makes a little bit of sense. So long-winded explanation of just making different tastier ways of thinking about writing chord progressions, writing bridges. Again, my opinion of a bridge is something totally different musically that still fits and isn't forced. Your opinion may differ from mine, but that's what we have. You do realize that you can play lead in open positions, right? e arc. All you do is play scales. You name drop terms you have no understanding of. You are harmful to students of guitar. You know, when I first started my YouTube account, I had to take an oath and that was to do no harm. So the fact that I have been called harmful to students of guitar, some have even likened me to the coronavirus of guitar teachers, is really upsetting to me and I will try to do better. Is no one gonna talk about how this man is a genius? Just kinda wanted to read that for no particular reason. Sean, you are a man of real vision and true genius. I can't thank you enough for your videos, love this one. Also just wanted to, to read that to kinda clear things up. All right, for listening homework, we're gonna go a little old school, take you to an awesome rock track by the Yeah Yeah Yeahs. First album is still kind of underappreciated, I think, in the grand scheme of things. Check that out. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks a lot.